1980, the Rolling Stones released a song called Send It To Me. In that song, in which Mick Jagger sang about needing a woman's love, it contains the lyric, she won't have to watch her step. She won't have to relocate. I guarantee her personal security. So speaking of relocation, in this presentation, we're going to look at the landlord's right to relocate the tenant in a commercial real estate lease. We think you'll find this discussion of the landlord's right to relocate the tenant and the tenant's security to be beneficial to you in understanding the commercial real estate lease. In this presentation, then, we will take a look first at who cares and why is this clause important. Then we will take a look at an example clause, and then we'll finally wrap it up by offering some suggestions and some tips that might improve your understanding of commercial real estate leases, and in particular, the relocation clause. So let's get started. So who cares about the relocation clause and why is it important? Let's dig in. The relocation clause gives the landlord the ability to shift the tenant from one space to another space. Typically, it's within the same uh, floor, um, and most likely it's going to be in within the same building. But nevertheless, it gives the landlord control over the space and over their building and allows them to move the tenant from one, uh, one space to another. As you can imagine, it's going to be very inconvenient for the tenant to have to move in the middle of the lease term from one space to another. It's also going to be very costly to whoever it is that ends up paying for the move. However, it's a very important clause because it balances the landlord's right to control their own building with the tenant's right to have quiet enjoyment of their space. Okay, so what does the relocation clause typically look like? Here's an example relocation of tenant clause that I pulled off of the internet. I'll highlight a few of the things that struck me as I was first reading this. So you'll see that the landlord does have the right to move the tenant from the premises to a new space within the same building project, and the new space has to be reasonably equivalent in size and layout. Secondly, you'll also see that the landlord has to provide 30 days notice to the tenant in order to do that, and that the landlord is responsible for paying all reasonable costs of moving the tenant's property to the new space. Third, You'll see that this relocation right does not terminate or otherwise modify the lease. And fourth, you'll also see that the landlord has the right to adjust the rent and the tenant's share of the costs, depending on whether the rentable area of the new space is more or less than the rentable area of the original space. This example of relocation clause appears to me to be very friendly toward the landlord. I could be wrong, but it appears to me that this clause was not heavily negotiated or even negotiated at all by the tenant. That being said, here are a few suggestions for you to consider when reviewing, drafting, and negotiating a relocation clause. One thing to look at is where exactly does the landlord have the right to relocate the tenant? For example, does the relocation have to be within the same building, within the same floor, or can it be to any space the landlord might have available even at another building. Secondly, take a look at the notice that the landlord must provide to the tenant. Is the time frame enough time for the tenant to actually make the move? Think of all the things that must happen during that time, physically moving the office equipment and furniture, desks, etc., plus relocating the hardware and IT and security systems that may have been in place already. A 30-day notice period that we saw in the example before is probably not enough time for all those things to happen. Something more like 120 days or 90 days would be much more appropriate and give everybody more time to make the move happen. A third area to look at in a relocation clause is what exactly the standards are for the new space. For example, is it going to be of similar size and layout as the current space? Are the views going to be the same? Is it going to be on the same floor? What about the quality of the finishes, the cabinets, the doors, the furniture, etc.? Is there any sort of decorations that, uh, for example, such as wall paintings that are going to be able to be transferred? In that same vein, what happens if the space is of different size, which most likely will happen? Does the rent get adjusted? Does the tenant have a right to measure the space? The cost of tenant improvements necessary to bring the new space up to the standards of the old space is a cost that definitely should be borne by the landlord. A fourth area to look at is exactly what costs are going to be paid for by the landlord. Certainly the cost of moving the furniture and the IT equipment and the phones, etc. should be included. 
but it's important to consider a lot of softer costs as well. Things like it's new stationery, advertising materials, logos, things like that that will be affected by the address change. A few other things to consider are whether the landlord should have a limit on the number of times they can relocate the tenant during the occupancy, and maybe whether the tenant has the right to terminate the lease if the relocation is un unacceptable to the tenant. Certainly in some situations, the tenant would be happy to move. However, most tenants probably don't want the landlord to have this unilateral right to relocate the tenant. Unfortunately, unless a tenant has been there for a long period of time or has a large enough space, the landlord's probably going to insist on having the right to relocate in the lease. I'm sure the Rolling Stones won't be recording anytime soon a song about the landlord's right to relocate the tenant, but I hope that this information has been valuable to you and will help you understand your commercial real estate lease as you move forward. This presentation is for general information purposes only. It is not to be construed as providing any advice, whether legal, real estate, tax, or otherwise.